Hi, I'm Mark Anders from the Adobe Edge team, and today what I'd like to show you is how to get started with Adobe Edge. With Edge Preview 6, one of the things we added was an in-app lessons panel. And this provides you with really the six essential lessons for getting started with Edge. And so what I thought I'd do is to sort of walk through a couple of those very, very briefly to show you sort of those essential techniques. So here is the getting started screen. As you can see, there's the getting started, the, the lessons. You can also learn what's new links to other resources, and when you're done with the welcome screen, you can hit the quiet button to just get rid of all of that other stuff. So I thought what we'd do first is take a look at the create lesson. Each of the lessons are, appears in a panel on the right hand side here, and the things, the steps in orange allow you to sort of step through and do things in the tool, and then there are instructions as to what to do. I'm not actually gonna use the instructions, but we'll uh, use the basic framework from the lessons. First thing I'm gonna do is open the sample. And then this is really about drawing and creating content. So what I can do is I can take this rectangle, I can draw it, and if I want, I can do things like uh, control the corner roundness. And what you're actually doing in Edge when you do this is you're creating an HTML element, in this case a div, and styling it with CSS. So we've made it seem really natural uh, to use, but what you're really doing is creating HTML. So I can also uh, grab the text tool and just type in something like hello world. You can center it and you notice as I do, we get uh, nice uh, guides. We can also work with bitmapped assets and uh, SVG vector assets. And those appear in the library panel. We've already imported the background image and what I'm gonna do is just drag it onto the stage here. And you'll notice as I do so, it goes on top of everything that I drew. Now, there's the elements panel here on the right and what that does is it gives you a view of the HTML DOM. And one of the things I can do is I can drag for example, this background to be underneath everything else and that sends it to the back. Another thing I can do is we've got this hello world on top of the rectangle. I can also change the parentage to make it so that the, the text is a child of the rectangle and you do that by dragging it onto the rectangle and it appears as a, a child in the tree. So next I'm just gonna hit this lessons back button and that brings me to the set of lessons and let's take a look at this lesson animate with the pin. The sample file actually looks pretty much like I've drawn here. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, if we go to the next step, it teaches you about, for example, the easing tool. And the easing tool is located down here and is really about creating that sort of the function that determines how you move from point A to point B. I can go to the next step and you'll notice it, it outlines each step for how to animate with this tool that we call the pin. And what the pin does is it provides sort of like a, another playhead so that you capture both the starting and the ending point. The pin captures the way the values are currently and the playhead is where the new values are. So with the pin stretched out here to a second, what I can do is just grab this. I don't have to think about keyframes or anything else, I just grab it and you'll notice that it creates the transition. If I hit play, it plays back. Another thing I'm gonna do is use this uh, command to return the, the playhead and reactivate that region, and then I'm going to add a rotation. And then you'll see it moves in from the left and rotates. Now one of the things you can do in Edge is you can select these transitions and you can move them. So I could do, for example, the rotation after the move, or I can even rescale the transition so that it comes in and then rotates. There's another lesson which is called animating with keyframes and I definitely recommend that you check that out. So finally what I'd like to show you is how to add interaction. And to do that, I'm gonna use the lesson entitled Extend with JavaScript. Now this lesson uses a different sample and you'll notice that in the lesson it says click to open the sample. So just by doing that, you'll be able to access the project files that come with the lessons. So let me show you what this animation looks like. Very, very simple. So let me run it in the browser because when you're working with code, that code never executes within Edge, so you really need to use the preview with browser command. So to do that, use the preview and browser command, which can be activated by command enter. So when we preview it in the browser, what you'll notice is that it just plays right through and we our stop button appears and then fades out and then we have our little circle that spins with a, a number inside. What we want to do is control its playback using actions and triggers within Edge. So let me show you how to do that. So this is what the animation looks like. 
And what I want to do is, first of all, I want to stop at time zero. I do that by using this insert trigger button and this brings up the little code panel. And you'll see it says trigger at zero milliseconds. And what I can do is I can use these code snippets on the right hand side to say, for example, stop. So this stops playback. We then want to have it so that when we click on this object here that we cause playback to resume. So what I do is I can right click and say open actions for play, which is the name of my element, and say click. And what I'm going to say is play. So finally, when I get to the end, I want to loop to this starting point. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a label, and I can do it either using this button or command L. I'm going to call this loop. And what that sets up is a label which I can refer to when I say jump back to this location. And so then I can either put a trigger as I did to stop here or preferably I can add a timeline action to say when the timeline is complete I want to play from and rather than giving a time code I'm going to say loop. Okay so what we've set up is a stop, play when you click on this, and then when the timeline is complete, it's going to loop. So let's run that by doing preview in browser. You'll see that my animation now comes up. It doesn't play. I click on that and it plays. Now one of the things you'll notice is that there's this number one. And I'm not going to do it for you, but let me just show you how the lesson ends. I'm just going to hop through. We'll do a preview in browser. And you see that we click on the play button and it cycles through in loops. But this time with every loop, it increments the counter. So that's some of the basics of how to work with Edge. Um, the built-in lessons provide a lot more detail and a number of other techniques, so definitely check them out. Download Edge, check it out yourself, and uh, I can't wait to see what you do with it. Thanks for watching.